Well, let's get the book up here. We're going to talk to Adam. Hopefully, you guys got some questions for him. Forward by Anthony Daniels. I had a guy that told me to make sure I asked him something and I forgot. Dude. What to ask? Yeah, one job. Oh, I remember what he asked. Okay. Here is. Hold on just a second. Brady. Adam Brady. Does it say his name on there? It does on the uh, thing right there. Oh, on the book. That's what I was trying to see if it says his name. Okay, guys. Adam. Brady. There's Adam. Can you hear us, Adam? Hey, thanks for having me on. Yep, oh, I can hear you. Thanks for finally. We finally yeah, did it. Glad to be here. All over and over again. I think it'll work. Yeah. Um, that's the second edition, but I've done like, uh, I guess about 20 Star Wars and Marvel books. Wow. Mm, dang. Marvel, okay. Uh, yeah, somebody wanted to ask you is a book of Boba, I mean, uh, Mandalorian. That you did it, but it didn't get released, or is he just pulling my leg? Um, that what that wasn't me. Um, I think that was Pablo that did that book. Um, but it, it was scheduled um, for DK to release, and then it got canceled um, last spring, I guess, uh, right after um, right after the announcement that they would uh, that they would have all those other uh, spin-off shows like Ahsoka and um, the Rangers of the Republic which we're not going to have now I guess um, and uh, what's what's the other one I think there's it's I got well, I guess the book of yeah. yeah so they're probably waiting to do one big book of all the shows I guess so that's uh, what that's what they've indicated. That's what I'm on board for that one. But um, yeah, this sense. one, this is a thick book. How I mean, I, I know you said this is like the second version of it. Um, but how long does it take you to like compile something like this? Yeah, that um, it takes about uh, two or three months of work um, on the original. Uh, but on the original, I had. Uh, three co-authors uh, plus a team, uh, well, two teams of editors on that. Um, that one, it was uh, this this new edition you've got, it was just me and Cole Horton. Um, and I didn't even know he was working on it until after I, I was done, I think, uh, that he was also on it. Um, that, I think I spent about a, a month, maybe a month and a half updating. But it's great, a full-time great. job when I do it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, how many? Let's see if we've got how many pages are in this thing. This thing is huge. I, when they sent it to me to give away, I couldn't believe how big it was. I could not. <laughs> I mean, 350 pages. Let's count the index page, but still. Uh, I got a question. Adam, have you ever checked out Star Wars anime? It's a sign off series, but it's really good. A oh, spin off series. What was that called? It is anime. You remember? Mm -hmm. I remember. I know Plus. what you're talking about, but yeah. Did you see the Star Wars anime? Is it, oh, the Star Wars uh, Visions, I think. You know? Yeah, that's uh, it. I'm, I'm, almost, I, I'm almost embarrassed to admit it, but I've not actually watched it. I mean, no. I, 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 we I, I, we're, we're big fans, so don't yeah. feel bad. You're a good company. Huh. Yeah. No, normally, I'll, I'll watch anything, you know, the day that it that it's out. Um, but that one, I just didn't feel like I needed to yet. It's yeah, it's not uh, it's not canon. Um, it's just a it's supposed to be a fun fun creative thing. And you know, I I I casually like anime from afar, but I'm not like a, a necessarily a big anime fan. You know, I, I grew up with like Robotech and uh, you know uh, the Macross stuff uh, back in the '80s uh, when that was on TV and a few things over the years. But I'm not I'm not like a big anime fan, so you know I wasn't like drawn to it. Like oh, I've got to see this. So uh, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, yeah, like I said, we hadn't watched it either. I uh, got another question, but you kind of answered it already. And that's the Mandalorian, which seems they're waiting to do a series of books. Which makes more sense than somebody having to buy a book every time a show comes up. Uh, right. Yeah. I think um, th I think there's there's a concern. You know, this, this is just my guess from from watching it, uh, watching what's happened with the books. I think 
when you when we got the um the the sequel trilogy you know there was a big bonanza of uh, toys especially in the beginning and books and things and they worry about people getting burned out you know i think the first stuff from the first yeah. movie sells well and then each successive movie it sells less and less so they i think there's some concern that if they keep putting these um guides out you know with every single thing that comes out eventually people are just going to get tired of it and won't keep buying it so they've got to space it out to keep it special yeah i mean we're talking according i mean you probably get cheaper forty dollars so if you come out one every year nobody's gonna be buying one every year when it's a lot right. of singing in it um how did you get started with right how did you get working with dk yeah, I uh, I was originally a travel writer. I lived uh, overseas in Vietnam and Cambodia, and I was um, writing travel guides for uh, countries in Southeast Asia for a dozen different publishers. And uh, one of those just happened to be DK, and I always had it in the back of my mind, oh, though, though that's that publisher that wrote those really cool uh, Star Wars guides that when I was in college... I used to look at in the bookstore, but I could never buy because I was a poor college student with student loans. Um, but I always loved their books. So I thought, well, maybe, you know, once I decide to come back to the U.S. Um, after, you know, I've got a lot of books on my resume, you know, I can ask if I can change topics. And so I eventually did. And it just happened to be when Disney uh, bought Star Wars uh, bought Lucasfilm and they, they wanted to start doing more books. So it was just the right time. Right. That's great, man. That's, that's so cool. And I know you say you've done some Star Wars and some Marvel. Are you, are you big fans of both or have you always been a big fan of them? Um, more Star Wars. Star Wars was kind of the focus of, uh, my, my childhood. Um, Marvel, you know, I grew up with like the Spider-Man uh -oh. Uh oh oh live friend or not oh there we are um, yeah there we go sorry we lost you for a little yes, bit I, 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 I grew up with um the the TV shows but uh it wasn't really Okay, I've got you. Um, yeah, it was uh, the MCU that really got me hooked hooked into uh, Marvel. Uh, so I'm kind of a uh, it's kind of a late addition to uh, my interests. Hey, you're never too old, you know. <laughs> um, so uh, Chris asked, does the book include anything about the EU? Yeah, uh, right. I don't, I don't think this one does. I guess it depends on what you mean by the EU. This is just canon stuff. Yeah, I don't think it really. It's like it's mostly movie stuff. Well, there's some cartoons. And... That's a, it. Leads into kind of a good kind of question when they when they bring you a project like this. Um, I guess how much do they tell you you um you have to do like a certain way and how much do they leave to you to be creative in your writing with right they um they come to me with um with the concept of the book already usually uh, most of the time they've even done uh, the outline, um, but there have been a couple of books where I'll actually write the outline for them of, uh, you know, a list of things that should be included. Um, but then they'll negotiate that um, what what does and doesn't need to be included. They'll negotiate that with Lucasfilm um, because Lucasfilm will have some of their own requirements of what they want to promote. Um, and then it's it's. It's up to me, you know, and my co-authors to, to write all the words, uh, sometimes to select the photos that we want to use. Um, so, you know, within that, I've, I've got some freedom. The objective is always uh, first to write, um, to write what exists, what's been created, you know, to draw from the movies and the shows and stuff. Um, 
but when when something hasn't been covered before um then we have some freedom to make things up uh mostly it's um like uh back you know technical details background details like manufacturers and um you know names of uh, weapons and uh you know the serial numbers of ships and things like that but once in a while i can get creative um but it all has to be eventually approved by someone in story group um like uh, pablo or uh, matt martin or um, leland chi Okay. Yeah, I figured they probably have to go everything, go over everything before you actually publish and and validate it. And say, yep, that looks good, you know. So that's not a bad thing. That's a pretty cool, you know, pretty cool job to have. A pretty good project to uh, get to work on. Yeah. I've been reading these books for years. I've, you know, probably since the prequel days when they when I was when I first became aware of them, and they're really cool. Yeah, did they do Indiana Jones? Yeah, they're all. They're, uh, they did. There, there was an Indiana Jones book, um, but uh, I, it was it was before my time, so I don't know what the deal was with it. It's um, it's it's a little rough. Uh, I, I I I gather from looking at it, they they just didn't have an, as many resources to work with, as many uh, photos um, and props to, that were photographed, because uh, with George Lucas with Star Wars, I mean, when he was making the prequels, he he photographed every actor in every costume a hundred different ways from, you know, every conceivable angle. Um, so there's lots of uh, photo resources. And DK books are highly dependent on the photos that are available. Right. Um, so if... if the, if they don't have the photos available, they're not going to make a book. Um, at, at most, you know, in one of those guides, they're only going to commission, you know, two or th three new photos themselves um, because it's very expensive to do for whatever whatever reason. Um, probably a lot of rights and legal issues uh, they have to negotiate. So mostly what they're doing is using um, the, the stock photos that Lucasfilm has. So everything's dependent on that. Okay. Chris, Chris, well, maybe you know this. Is, is it available in any other languages? Yeah, they are. Um, Spanish is uh, very accessible uh, here in the U.S. You can uh, get Spanish versions on Amazon. Um, but there, I know there's uh, French and German, uh, Chinese and Japanese. Uh, some of my books, I know they've, they've gotten like real obscure. Like I think there's like Portuguese and uh, you know uh, Latvian and and stuff like that. It just depends wow. on how how pop popular the book is. Man, that's okay. cool. Captain Laser says, "Adam, nice work. A request. Need a Jawa. Need a Jawa book. How did those creature those tiny creatures make a giant sand crawler? I don't know if you can answer that one, but." <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, at this Lars point, um, some of those things are some of those things are probably um, off limits for a writer like me, as far as making up new backstories. For I know uh, Tatooine was always off limits um, for inventing new stuff in these guides because. They always had it once they sold the company. Well, even before they sold the company, uh, when George still had it, he he had already started, you know, kind of planning some movies that he was going to make, um, possibly to make uh, Lucasfilm look more valuable uh, in the sale. Um, so Tatooine was always off limits because there was always plans to make uh, things like the Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi. Uh, or Boba Fett in, in other story forms. So, uh, yeah, where they know they've got plans, they limit uh, making stuff up. But I'm I'm hopeful we'll see you know a Jawa movie. I've always thought um, 
it, Jawas would be a great, a great character set for something like Pixar to work with, uh, you know, in yeah. cooperation with Lucas the minions Stone, of the Star Wars universe. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, uh, yeah. Jason let us know the sand crawlers were abandoned mining machines. So I don't know if that helps somebody out there. I thought maybe they just stood on each other's shoulders and built it level by level. You know? Yeah, I thought they just <laughs> stole a bunch of ladders and parts and made it as they went. Um, you, were, one I'm you were talking about the um, the vast photo resources they have at, at you know Lucasfilm Disney. You know that's got to make your job a little hard at times because you're looking through all these photographs and you're like trying to decide which one should be the hero shot. How how tough is that? Is that ever a problem? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, it is very tough. Uh, it's it's been a few years since. Um, since I've uh, accessed that uh, that whole photo library, um, but I will say it's it's very cumbersome <laughs> to work with. So um, yeah, I, I prefer if I can to uh, pawn that job off actually on onto the the editors um, and be be and be as little involved in the photo selection as I can actually because it's you know it's much easier just to have them pick the photos and then I write. Uh, to match the photos. Yeah, I don't right. blame you. It's, it's got to make your eyes cross after a while looking at like, you know, a hundred versions of the same photo. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Just just a nitpick. Why ain't your name on the book? On the cover? Yeah, you know, there was, uh, supp there was supposed to be a slip cover with that book um and it was supposed to have photos and names and bios of the authors and at the last minute they uh they nixed that but because they'd already planned the book out there was no place inside the book to do it so uh, that was actually one point uh, i and my co-authors were very disappointed about i'm yeah. sure yeah i mean you are on page three very nice, yeah. Let's hold on page right here. Right. So at least, right. Right. Yeah, on there. that's gotta, you know, it's gotta feel good, you know. But really, yeah, should be on the my cover. Al alphabetical privilege. Oh, yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> but really, you should be on the cover. I'm somewhere. I mean, all that work y'all put into it. Um, Rise of Skywalker. Did you get spoiler material? Did no, you know the whole story? Uh, no, unfortunately, um, I'm trying to think how that was timed. Um, no, that, uh, didn't get, yeah, didn't get any spoilers on that. Um, where I've gotten the most spoilers was working on the Rebels guides. I got to see all that a year ahead of time. Like I knew Ahsoka was coming back a year before everyone else. Um, cool. Uh, you kept your mouth so shut. Rebels, yeah. I, right. I, I think I got, if you can do that, they just give you better and better projects. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think I got some um, some advance uh, info on uh, that other animated show. Um, what's that one that takes place uh, in, during the sequel trilogy, the more recent an animated uh, Resist show? That that Resistance? Yeah. Yeah. Resistance. Yeah. Um, and, uh, in my stormtroopers book, uh, for another publisher that I, I did get very little, uh, advanced info on, um, the, uh, the last Jedi, but not a lot. Uh, Disney's gotten real, uh, tight with, with their, uh, security and secrecy. Um, it's, it's a lot different than it was in the early days. Uh, when they first took over, and it still ran like uh, the old Lucasfilm did. Right. Uh, now they're they're much they're much tighter about uh, keeping things under wraps and not sharing uh, advanced stuff with the authors. No, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Have you been watching Book of Boba Fett? I have. Yeah. Have you been enjoying it? I have. Um, for the most part, um, I, I've enjoyed it. I like it. 
um, there are a lot of really uh, cool elements. You know, I like I love seeing the huts on screen, and I think they did a great job with the Wookie. Um, and there's things here and there that are that are really cool. Um, I will say, you know, it, it's it's a bit of a mix for me though. With with the Mandalorian, um, you know, I was really hardcore uh, into that and really, you know, really loved all of it. There, well, not entirely all of it. There were there were one or two slow episodes that first season. Um, but I've I've gone back and watched the Mandalorian, and it still excites me, you know, the the same the same way it did when I first saw it. But I will say the Book of Boba Fett, um, it's it's more slow. Um, I'd like yeah. them to pick up the pace a little bit, you know. G George Lucas, his his mantra was faster and more intense, um, and I think they uh, would benefit from. Uh, from adopting that mantra with uh, Boba Fett, you know, and there's, yeah. there's some things where the tone is, it, it's, it's not whole episodes. It's, um, it's just like a scene here or there where the tone is not quite right to me. Um, but overall, I, I really enjoy it. Cool. We won't even bring up the speeder bikes. <laughs> I think that's the one yeah, thing we can all agree on is the pacing. Yeah, I mean, we pacing. need a little bit of a jump of a little right. jolt or something. But it's it's hard to watch. Sometimes it's hard to watch stuff because you're, you know, your writing brain. You know, you're watching them like ah, I probably would have done yeah. that different or something like that. Right. You know, but right. and then I remind him yeah. sometimes. I'm like I turned off and went to my kid brain and I enjoyed it a lot more. You know, but there's definitely yeah. some moments like that we've experienced too. Yeah. It does help, um, I think, to watch Star Wars with kids. Um, I know, you know, I enjoyed like uh, the the Force Awakens. You know, I loved it when it first came out, um, and I saw it like five times in the theater. Um, but you know, as the first year went on, you know, and the more movies came out and more years passed, um, the excitement settled a bit. Um, you know, and I could be more critical of it because I had time to digest it. But then I saw it uh, again with some uh, kids in my family. Um, and uh, I saw it through their eyes for the first time. And then I had that same excitement back as the first time I saw it. So I think that's, that's important with Star Wars um, to re remember that, that it is for kids. It should be for kids if they're doing it right. Um, and to uh, see it through their eyes. Absolutely, that's uh, that's why I feel uh, make fun of Solo. But I took my son to see it, and him and his friends loved it. And I was like, well, I love watching him watch it. So yeah. that makes me like it a lot more. Right. Yeah. We got uh, Lucky says Adam. Is there any other series you would like to do a book over? Um, I would do anything I can get, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to do something for the Mandalorian. Um, you know, I, I love Marvel studios as well, you know, so I'd, I'd love to do, you know, I, I love it all. Um, Marvel studios, I really liked, uh, you know, the, what ifs, I think the, the best two were the, what if series and, uh, the one division. So I'd love to do something with that. Um, yeah, it's, it's all good to me, you know, a Lord of the Rings, you know, I'd love to do, I'd love to do something with that. Um, avatar, if they can ever get a movie out in the theater, um, <laughs> I'd uh, I'd love I'd love to do uh, something for Farscape, um, the Jim Henson series. Uh, I know they had hoped to reboot that series some way, um, with uh, especially now with streaming. Um, so if they could uh, kick that off again, I'd love to be involved with a Jim Henson project. Yeah, that would be very cool. Yeah, we need one of these for MCU. We need like this thick and full of right. big, awesome pictures. They don't have one. I don't think they have one. They don't have one. I agree. No, um, we've got a, 
I did a visual guide, um, mm -hmm. but um, there's not an encyclopedia for the MCU. Um, I know it's been in discussion. Uh, I don't know whether DK is going to do one, but I think I, I, I've heard whispers that Marvel want Marvel Studios wants one, um, but nothing has materialized yet. It's definitely long overdue because, I mean, as much as I love looking at this, I would love to look at the Marvel cinematic stuff the way that we get to look at the Star Wars stuff. Um, you could do a, a book right. on Iron Man armors alone. Mm. Definitely. Okay, I think we got one more question for you, then we'll let you get out of here. I'm going to keep you all night. But uh, Adam, would you be able to visit any of the sets references and research for research purposes? I was not. Um, and it's a pity because uh, I'd love to. Uh, but uh, I have had access. I have had access to things kind of after the fact. Um, I've been to Lucasfilm and had, you know, had a tour there, seen what they've got uh, up around the office. Um, I've, uh, you know, of course, I've been to this all the celebrations in San Diego Comic Con, so I've seen whatever displays they've done there uh, for the various conventions. Um, George Lucas. Uh, he's you know he did a he's done several traveling exhibits so we had the star wars costumes uh here a couple of years ago in michigan so i got to see those um you know i not star wars or marvel but i've got a friend a lot of friends at uh, weta in new zealand so i've been out to those studios um and I've seen some of the behind the scenes stuff, some of the, um, the sets from The Hobbit uh, and props and things. And, you know, as a tourist, I've visited a lot of those locations out in New Zealand. Um, with, uh, with Rebels, uh, because I, I did get um, a lot of advanced uh, info for that series a year early, I got to watch um the shows uh read the scripts um see a lot of their their outlines for the series um a year in advance so that kind of thing but uh never been to a star wars set i'm jealous of the the, the weta visit though that bet that, that's i love to visit new zealand in general but to be able to go and see you know everything in the weta workshop would be amazing yeah, it was uh, it was amazing. I'd, I'd say it was a once in a lifetime thing, but most people don't get to do that. So it was it was a, a rare privilege. I think they at least, at least need to send you a couple of tickets to uh, Galaxy's Edge and let you you know go walk around there and you know experience that. You know if they if they don't let you on the set, you know. I I agree. Actually, you know, it was when they did the grand opening. Um, I had fully admit I was a little bit jealous because I had a lot of friends and colleagues that uh, apparently got free tickets. Um, maybe even some got some plane tickets. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But I never got that invite, which was really weird because I actually wrote um, sections for Galaxy's Edge in that book. Um, so oh, my gosh. I, I, you know, I didn't get invited. So Disney just uh, completely overlooked me. Well, you keep working hard. You keep you keep coming out of this great work, and uh, I'm sure you will be rewarded. They're gonna they're gonna notice, and they're gonna they're gonna get you your just due, man. Well, thank you. Okay, we're gonna, again. We're giving it away on Twitter or Facebook. I haven't so if you follow me on Twitter, it's it's that junk man or just that junk man over on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. Links in the description of all the videos. So. We're going to give it away probably starting tomorrow. I'll start doing something to give it away. Sadly, I only have one. So we're going to give this one away here. But Adam, I want to thank you for coming on. And maybe we can do this again, I hope. Yeah, thank you. It's been fun. Yeah, and I'm glad we finally, I know I kept pushing you off, pushing you off. So I'm glad we finally found time. No problem. Yeah, glad to be here.
Okay, we'll we'll talk. Thanks again. Thanks, Adam. Good talking to you. All right. Yep. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Oh, you too. Hey, jump man <laughs> channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs> <laughs>